Hi everybody! It's Sunday Facebook Live event and we're a little bit early today at 3.30. There goes my alarm to tell me it's time to start. So we are, uh, my name is Therese and uh, we do Sunday Facebook Live events um, every Sunday at 4 p.m. Mountain, or no, Pacific, Pacific Standard Time. I'm on the Pacific Coast. Uh, today and each, each Sunday we have different uh, topics that we go through. And uh, today we're going to be talking about how to make a peppermint spray. And um, I quite like the peppermint spray, especially this time of the year when it's hot here in the Pacific Coast. And um, the temperature is getting up to 30, 36 degrees some days, 25 degrees other days. Uh, but it gets a little bit hot and sticky. And um, a nice way to cool down is with um, a peppermint spray. So we're going to make one. And I'll show you how to do it. It's really, really easy. And I'm sure you might even have all the ingredients on hand. Hopefully you do. So you'll need a container. This is a two ounce spray bottle. This is the kind that um, I like to use. It's uh, it's darker colored glass. And so that protects the oils from sun exposure and from breaking them down. So try and get either a dark colored glass or amber, a blue colored glass. Either one of those is, is fine to use. So you need a, a bottle, a spray bottle, and then you'll need some witch hazel. And I like to use witch hazel that's alcohol free, which is this one here, um, because it's then it's not drying on the skin. So uh, if you got witch hazel, you can get it at um, usually at your local drugstore. And the cosmetic department will often have um, witch hazel. And then you need your peppermint oil, which is right here, and then a little bit of water. And that's all you need is just those basic ingredients. So I've got some other ingredients here I'm going to move aside so that um, we can talk about those a little bit later. I've got a little bit of coconut oil. I'm going to tell you how to use that. But for now, all we need is our bottle, witch hazel, peppermint, and water. So, And I also like to label all of my bottles because I make a lot of sprays and things like that. And so... Um, it's a really good idea to have a label on them so I'm not spraying the wrong thing in the wrong place. So I did, this was one I had made already that's pretty much empty. So I'm going to top it up, but I'm going to give you the full recipe. So take some of your witch hazel and just pour a little bit in. Maybe about, like, maybe about up to here. Not much. You just need a little bit in the bottom. All that is for is to help the peppermint to bind to something instead of water because if you know if you combine just straight oils with straight water it's not going to mix as well so that's what I use the witch hazel for and then it kind of just gives it a nice smooth texture as well then I'm going to add my peppermint drops and I'm going to put in five drops so again I kind of watch for the little hole um, on the on the rim on the edge on the inside rim here there's a tiny little hole not the center one but there's a tiny one just below it and that's where the drop comes out the center one is is for air so I try to line that up a little bit so that it makes a nicer trip and then I just turn it and one two three four five and that's about all we need in the other sprays that I do I'll do other body sprays or room sprays, linen sprays, things like that. I'll often do a combination of 10 oils, no, sorry, 10 drops um, in the two ounce um, bottle just to help it give it a nice aroma. But with the peppermint, it's, tw it's quite strong. So five drops is lots in there. And then I swish that around a little bit, make sure the peppermint is mixed in with the witch hazel. Give it a little swirl and then top up the rest with water. Um, you can use a funnel too if that's a little bit easier. Um, this one has a nice pouring spout so it works just fine. So all the way to the top. Screw on your lid. Make sure that it's sealed nice and tightly. I've had them leak before if they're not tight. Let's give it a little swish up together and then you can kind of tell too that it's nicely mixed together. When you have it sitting on the shelf for a while and you want to go use it again, make sure to give it a little shake just to make sure that it's mixed really well. So what are you going to do with this? Um, it's hot outside, you're hot and sticky. One of the best places to put your peppermint is on the back of your neck. So I often just give myself a little spray 
and spray whoever's around me as well. You can also put it on the front. Just very cooling and very refreshing. Yeah, just put it all over. Hey, little stinky here. Yes, do a little bit of that there too. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Peppermint's all good. Now, if you peppermint is a great oil not only for cooling down, can be cooling down from the sun, could be cooling down from other wonderful feminine things that we tend to get a little bit warm from. Um, so it's great for that too. Throw it in your purse if you ever are in that situation where you're just really overheating and you need a little bit of a spritzer. Throw it in there. Peppermint's also good for tummy upset. So you can use it straight up, um, right on your tummy, and just um, put a drop on your hand, uh, mix it around a little bit, and then rub that onto your belly. That works out really good. It's nice to dilute it a little bit first because it is one of those hot oils. So that means that when you are... Uh, putting it directly on your skin, it can feel a bit um, spicy so or burny kind of sensation. It's not damaging the skin or it's not damaging to you, but it just can feel a little bit um, spicy. So what I like to do is use a little bit of coconut oil to um, just to kind of tone it down a little bit. This one's well used. So this is a liquid coconut oil and it comes from this big bottle which is called MCT oil. So this is uh, called fractionated coconut oil. And um, this brand in particular is New Roots, but you can get, uh, look around and find different ones as well. So basically, uh, I like to have it liquid so that it's easy to work with. If I'm using, I didn't bring the solid coconut oil, but you probably know what I'm talking about. It can be harder to mix um, oils in unless you're wa wanting more of a creamy kind of um, texture. But if you're just wanting to dilute your oils, then I take, I put mine in a little dropper. So I add... Uh, just a few drops um, in my palm and then add the oil that I want to dilute so if, especially if you're working with children it's a really good idea to dilute uh, these oils so then I will put one drop of peppermint and there we go so it's also really good for so for your tummy this could go directly onto your tummy or for cold and cough so if you've got some congestion going on just place that right there and that will help to um, breathe a little bit easier and uh, open up your pathways as well. So it's great for cold and coughs, great for tummy upset as well. So that's the fractionated coconut oil that I use. And I pretty much don't leave home without that if I'm traveling, because I always find a reason that I would need to dilute something um, and uh, yeah, just make it a little, go, a little faster, a little further, and also um, just make it less hot of an oil. So in sprays like this, so this one, because I'm using it on my body, um, I will use the witch hazel, but if I was making a spray that I was using for let's say a room spray or a linen spray But it's not going to be on my body. I would use salt as the emulsifier of that so that agent that I would put in first um, To make the oils mix in so I would put just a dash of salt in maybe like an eighth of a teaspoon Not very much just enough so that the oil has something to bind to so I put that in to the spray bottle first then put my oils in usually about 10 drops uh, of, of a combination of oils it could be straight lavender which is a beautiful uh, linen spray spray your pillows before bed and it smells lovely or a bathroom spray i really like to use citrus fresh and lemon um, or another oil called purification so i might do a combination of those three oils maybe do three drops each or divide it up and do two and two so two drops of citrus fresh no sorry five drops of citrus fresh and five drops of purification and um, I leave those in the bathroom so that's my bathroom spray so um, I'm curious where we use fragrances throughout the house and how we can switch them out for things that are um, less toxic a lot of the uh, fragrances that we use in the bathrooms like Febreze or plugins um, glades things like that they are they have VOCs and chemicals in them and um, that can just cause a lot of um, extra work on our bodies to clear those out of our system. So if we can still be using um, wonderful smelly things, but they're also healthy for us, it's a great way to just improve the health of our body um, and in our homes as well. So take a look and see if there's something in your house, maybe this week, the one item that you could trade off for an essential oil fragrance instead of a chemical fragrance and see how you do. Make some sprays up. Um, that uh, room spray that I was using with the purification and the citrus fresh, beautiful in shoes. I just leave this right in the boot room and spray shoes before we're heading out the door or after we get in if they're ex extremely stinky. Um, the dog came in yesterday and uh, I don't know what he rolled in. I think it was bear poo. 
so I just sprayed his bed because um, I didn't catch him in, to bath him in time. So I just sprayed his bed while he wasn't in it with the citrus fresh and the purification and just kind of um, neutralized that bear poo odor. Ugh, it was a little bit strong. So um, yeah, take a look around this week and see where can you change um, just one item in your house that maybe is a chemical that um, is 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 helping you smell good, but uh, might might have some side benefits as well. Um, I'm noticing that I use fragrances a lot in my home. Um, it's kind of like one of the first things that I do when I come home from being out is go to the diffuser and turn it on and figure out what it is I want to smell like, or entering into my bedroom and going, what is what is it the aroma here that I want to create? Um, is it is it a, a romantic aroma? Is it a sleepy aroma? Is it a clean aroma? Just what is it that I want to create? And um, I go to my uh, medicine cabinet of my oils to choose those oils to either diffuse or to apply um, or to put in a tissue by my pillow and um, be able to just smell those. It smells a wonderful way to get into our brain and into our body to help us feel better uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It's one of those things that just hit all components of our bodies. So we are, um, I'm, I'm not going to be too long today because I have to dash, but um, I'm very glad to share this with you and I hope that you can make your own peppermint spray and take it to the beach with you. It's not photosensitive, so the purification, or sorry, the peppermint oil is not photosensitive, so it is great in the sun, meaning it won't um, interact with the, with the sun on your skin. So you just go to town with the purific, with the, sorry, peppermint, not purification, with the peppermint and really enjoy that um, nice refreshing feel. So I'm going to give myself one little more dash and as I head out to my community barbecue and I will smell like peppermint too, which is great. Awesome. Thank you all for joining. Please let me know if there's something you want me to cover. Um, I'm happy to do DIYs. That's one of my favorite things to do is to create new things with oils and uh, be able to change out things in my home. Um, for something that I have um, handmade and it's easy. I mean we did this in in minutes It doesn't take long at all to make stuff So please let me know what it is you would like uh, me to cover and I will try to fit that in for everybody Awesome. Have a great afternoon. Happy summer. Bye-bye